Hey, Dave Northey here from Microsoft in Ireland. Um, I've just put together a little nearly six minute long uh, video presentation on how to get Hyper-V networking working correctly on a laptop. Uh, lots of people don't seem to know. Um, I've been doing it for ages and I was asked to share. Um, so this is my laptop. Um, it's a normal laptop. So if I go into a network control panel applet, I've got um, obviously a, a wired and a wireless uh, ethernet connection. Uh, I've got Windows Server installed, Hyper-V, and if you go in and add a virtual network, um, just call this one demo, I've obviously got three options, uh, external, internal only, and private. This is going to be an external one, which actually connects to the network port on the back of my machine, which will actually let me connect other machines to my my network that I'm creating. Um, uh, you do lose network connect connectivity there. It did come back. And um, what's happened now is um, what, what was my physical network connection only has the Microsoft Virtual Switch protocol um, bound to it, and I've got a new virtual network with everything else bound to it. Uh, the two joined together, obviously. Um, this is just the best practice. Um, when you mess around with Hyper-V, you really should name every network card you're playing with. Uh, it gets very confusing if, if they're all called uh, local area network one, two, three. Um, right, this is the clever bit. Go into wireless um, and you share wireless, so internet connection sharing. Uh, Hyper-V doesn't support uh, wireless directly, so this is the way you get out. Um, when you it says it here actually. When you when you enable internet connection sharing, what it does is it puts an address of 192.168.137.1 um, on your other network um, interface. So what's happened here is this one here, um, that's my virtual switch, has now got an, in, an, an IP address of 192.168.137.1. Now remember that that's going to be my gateway for everything else I do. Now if I leave that as it is, every machine on that interface will get access to the internet over the Wi-Fi, but I connect to lots of different Wi-Fis and I want domain controller on my network and I'm going to want my own DNS server and lots of other things. So this is where you need to do. Um, on the domain controller virtual machine that you've got, uh, go into the network settings and configure the network interface to be this. Now It's going to be 192.168.137.0 something. So I would, pick 100, it's a good number, I can remember that one. That's my domain controller. Um, my gateway is going to be 192.168.137.1 and my DNS server is going to be myself. Now, if I was manually, manually type in the same one, solves, it uh, gets rid of confusion. So, pointing to myself for DNS. Uh, now what I can do is I can go into my DNS server and configure it to use a forwarder that's going to be available um, on every Wi-Fi I ever connect to. Um, and obviously every, most Wi-Fi's I connect to, that's not going to be the case. Everyone's, everyone's going to be different. So the default one there is mshome.net and that's a, that's the setting when you enable internet connection sharing. That's what you get. You get you get 192.168.137.1 uh, machine name mshome.net. I want to get rid of all that and I'm going to change some stuff. So just to quickly make sure this has worked properly, I'm going back to the physical host Going back into the network settings, going into that one, uh, and I'm going to set the IP stack for this to be, I'm going to give it itself as its gateway. So the gateway is always 192.168.137.1. And I'm going to give the domain controller as my DNS server. So 192.168.137.100. So okay to that. So that, net, that, working, that network interface is working correctly. Uh, back to my domain controller um, and set my forwarders up. So go to forwarders, edit this one, delete the default one, and add one that you know that's going to be unavailable anywhere you go. So lots of people use uh, Google's, I use OpenDNS. Uh, work for Microsoft after all. No, it's, <laughs> ignore that, it's a joke. Um, so what happens there is it goes off and, and, and it authenticates. So now anytime this machine connects to a Wi-Fi network, wherever I go, wherever I happen to be doing demos, DNS resolution is going to work. Now I have more than one machine on my on my little uh, test network, so I'm going to enable DHCP as well. Um, if you've got a domain-based DHCP server running, uh, the noddy little one that pops up on the interface for internet connection sharing gets disabled, which is quite handy. So 192.168.137.10 to how many machines you want to do, I'll do 50. Just 
40 machines. Um, that'll do. Um, no exclusions, default lease. May as well configure these bits now. Uh, so my gateway is, if you're following along, 192.168.137.1. Uh, and my DNS server is dot 100. Don't need wins anymore. Yes, I'll activate it. Um, and just one last quick one to make sure it will work. So any machine you're going to connect to this network from now on, whether it be virtual or physical, on the connected to a switch on the other end, should have correct internet connectivity. So my request goes to my DNS server, which is running on my D my D my domain controller, uh, and it goes out through the Wi-Fi. And, and works correctly. So that's how you set up Wi-Fi networking um, on, a, on a laptop running uh, Hyper-V. Very easy, very easy to follow. Enjoy.